Hey YouTube, it's ICU and welcome to the 73rd episode of Best Tech and Phone Rumors. To start off, I want to talk about the site Apple Pro. Now a couple months back, they leaked a picture of what they were claiming was an iPad 3 dock connector and ribbon cable. Now even though it didn't really reveal too much about the next generation iPad and it wasn't really authenticated, it's been reported that the supplier who accidentally lost this part is actually suing the Taiwanese website Apple Pro for leaking the picture. And if you guys want more details on it, I have a link to Apple Pro on the post that's down below. Also, Apple pushed out a 7.6.1 firmware for the Time Capsule and Airport Base Station. And in addition to releasing a new firmware for their two networking devices, they also updated Airport Utility to 6.0 for the two latest devices with the Mac running OS X Lion. For those of you that don't know, Airport Utility is basically the way you manage your Airport Base Station or your Apple Time Capsule. And previously, it had a couple of different tabs and sections where you could go in and you could look at your device and actually make some changes. Well, now it has a fully redesigned interface and it's more iOS-esque than ever. And it would appear that Apple is starting to make that transition to a more sleek and clean look for basically everything that they offer. And with the update to Airport Utility on the 30th, their networking devices are no exception. Now, I'm sure most of you have heard Apple reported shockingly high sales numbers for their first fiscal quarter of 2012. And the first quarter of 2012 them wasn't only the best quarter in Apple's history, but it was also the most profitable quarter ever reported by a technology company and the second most profitable quarter ever reported by a US-based firm. It's also widely known that Apple is worth over $400 billion and that they have $97.7 billion in cash reserves. Now, even though we hear this number, it's kind of hard to actually visualize it. That's why MBA Online put together a really nice infographic that helps comprehend how much Apple is actually worth and how much cash they really have. So I highly recommend checking it out if you're at all interested. Also the other day BGR reported that one of their sources is in possession of a next generation iPad, presumably an iPad 3 prototype. And according to the debug report, the prototype is equipped with a quad core A6 processor. And it also revealed that if accurate, it will come in two different models. And that's a Wi-Fi model as well as a LTE, GSM, and CDMA combo model. Now that in theory should be able to run on practically any network, CDMA or GSM, it doesn't really matter, and it will also be 4G LTE capable. But again, that is if this debug report is authentic. Also kind of along the same lines, according to analysts, the sixth generation iPhone, which is widely known and rumored as the iPhone 5 online, is actually set to be unveiled at this year's WWDC or Worldwide Developer Conference event. Now previously, Apple has always unveiled their iPhone at WWDC until the iPhone 4S. However, according to these analysts, they're suggesting that Apple will get back on track and unveil the sixth generation iPhone at this year's WWDC event. Also, a leaked calendar from Moscow Center suggests that Apple will hold WWDC somewhere between the 10th and 15th of June this year, because in the calendar it says that they have that time blocked off for a corporate meeting. Now, in the past, Apple has used the event name corporate meeting as a placeholder for WWDC. So if these reports are accurate at all, we could see Apple's next generation iPhone released in time for summer. Also, according to Patently Apple, the US Patent and Trademark Office published a patent filed by Apple that details a touchscreen desktop with new virtual controls. And essentially, Apple's touchscreen desktop patent focuses on the addition of new hybrid knob and slider controls to replace or add on to existing graphical elements that are widely used among all non-touchscreen operating systems. So basically what that means is Apple filed a patent for a new virtual controls to actually work on a computer operating system instead of a mobile operating system like iOS. So there's simply changes and add-ons to the operating systems that you see every day on typical computers. So even though Apple did file this patent, there's no guarantee that we will see a touchscreen Mac from them anytime in the future. And that's simply because they love collecting patents and they like having an arsenal of patents at their disposal. Also, green jobs are more abundant than ever before. It's been reported that they actually pay more and the annual salary is more than typical jobs. And so Surprisingly, seven out of the 10 top eco-friendly and environmentally conscious companies are actually centered around technology and providing technology products. So I thought that the infographic that was put together highlighting green jobs was extremely interesting. And I'll have a link to that down below in the more info if you guys wanna check it out. And finally, I made two videos since the last episode of Best Tech and Phone Rumors. And the first one was how to free up RAM on the iPhone 4S, iPhone 4, iPhone 3GS, iPod Touch 4th and 3rd generation, as well as the iPad 
iPad 2 and the original iPad. Now, a lot of people actually misunderstood this video. Essentially, what I demonstrated in the video was removing these processes that start up with the phone and they take up and consume RAM and most of them do not have a function that directly relates to you or everyday activities. They're simply related to things like Apple crash reports, checking for App Store updates every day, and actually managing which applications it thinks it should close if you're starting to run out of RAM. And if you remove these launch daemons, it can significantly speed up your device and it will free up your RAM no matter how much free RAM your device actually has to start with. And the second video is how to install Spire on the iPhone 4 3GS, iPad 2, the original iPad, as well as the iPod Touch 4th and 3rd generation. Now, Spire is a Siri port that requires you to go through a server that's filled with iPhone 4S keys to actually make your requests. And in the video, I did give you guys a server that I highly recommended. Now, that was a paid server, and I'm just going to say this again because there seemed to be a lot of confusion in the comments on that video. All the good servers are paid because they have an extra layer of security. If they didn't have that security, basically the server admin or somebody that hacks into the server would be able to see all of your information, so things like your contacts, your mail, your phone numbers, everything would be visible that you actually use Siri for. But with paid servers, they add that extra layer of security and the admins of the servers can't even see what you're dictating depending on how secure that server actually is. So again, if you guys do install Spire, I highly recommend going with a paid server. But of course, that option is entirely up to you. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys liked it. Please remember to rate it up if you did and hit that subscribe button to be notified every time I release a new video. Also, don't forget I will have links to everything I talked about in today's episode down below in the more info. And if you guys wanna be updated more often, just be sure to follow me on Twitter, like me on Facebook, and add me to one of your circles inside Google+. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.